At the local harbor, Tyler and his date Margot wait for the boat that will take them to a private island where they will dine at Hawthorne, an extremely exclusive restaurant operated by the best chef in the country. Tyler's a foodie obsessed with this chef and the details behind fine dining in general. When the boat arrives, the two of them are shocked to see how many important people will be traveling with them. There's Lillian, the food critic that discovered the chef and her editor Ted, post-prime actor George with his assistant and girlfriend Felicity, and a trio of important tech business investors, Dave, Soren, and Bryce. The ones that get Margot's attention though are businessman Richard and his wife Anne because Margot knows Richard and doesn't want him to know she's there, so she tries to stay out of his sight. During the trip, they're already served the first fancy dish, and Tyler gushes over it while he takes a picture, but Margot isn't impressed. When they finally arrive at the island, the mater d' Elsa calls Margot a different name, so Tyler has to explain there was a change of plans and he came with a different date, making the whole situation pretty awkward. Before dining Teresa tour for the guests, and Elsa shows the guests all the facilities while explaining the restaurant's employees do all the hunting and farming, that's why everyone lives here. The chef also lives on the island, but his house is off limits. Afterward they finally enter the restaurant, where they discover the kitchen is an open area that allows them to watch the cooks work. There's also an old lady named Linda on one of the tables who looks like doesn't belong at all. When Richard finally notices Margot's presence, he asks his wife to exchange seats with him so he can have a better view. Elsa informs everyone that they can watch the cooks work but pictures aren't allowed. Tyler immediately comes closer to point out all the techniques they're using and asks tons of questions, so the cooks have to ask him to stop distracting them. At that moment, Chef Sloak arrives and Elsa tells him something that makes him stare at Margot. The first dish is the complimentary appetizer. Lillian takes her time with the food, smelling and tasting everything carefully, but Felicity is busy trying to break up with George. Margot likes the dish but isn't super into it, so Tyler has to arrogantly explain why this is so important. Moments later, it's time for the first course. Sloak comes forward and claps his hand to make all his cooks turn around at the same time like obedient little soldiers. Then he offers a speech about his work and reminds everyone that they shouldn't just eat, they should savor and relish. Tyler tries to make a comment on that and only gets scolded by Sloak for interrupting. Tyler still takes pictures even if it's forbidden. For the second course, Sloak claps again and explains that bread's the food of the common man, but since his guests aren't common, thus they aren't getting any bread. The next dish is a breadless bread plate, only small drops of the savory accompaniments are on the plate. Tyler absolutely loves it but Margot finds it insulting. Lillian thinks the emulsion does look slightly split, and as an ironic response, they send a whole bowl of it to her table. The Tech brothers think the joke is running too far and ask for bread but they're denied even when they point out they work for Doug Varick, the actual owner of the island. To shut them up, Elsa creepily tells them that they will eat less than they desire and more than they deserve. Margot refuses to eat her dish and Tyler tries to take it for himself only to accidentally break a glass in the process. Sloak immediately comes to the table and Tyler tries to apologize, but the chef is more interested in knowing why Margot isn't eating. Margot points out there is no food, and Sloak replies that he carefully designed the size of the portion so if she doesn't eat, she won't fill up. Margot still refuses to touch the dish, causing Sloak to leave rather offended and surprise everyone by gently checking on Linda. Margot can't help turning to look at Richard and notices this, causing her to point out that Margot looks like their dead daughter. Richard pretends he doesn't know Margot and asks his wife to change the subject. With another clap, Sloak announces the third course called Memory, which prompts him to share a memory about his family's old taco nights. He reveals Linda's his mother, and that she's been drunk since he was a kid. His father was a drunk first, and one night, Linda called him out for it, so the man tried to kill her with the phone cord. To save his mother, little Sloak grabbed a pair of scissors and stabbed his father in the thigh, but now he regrets not having killed him. To remember that special taco night, the dish is a smoked chicken thigh served with a pair of scissors in it on top of a phone cord. The tortillas were made fresh but to add a touch of innovation, they've been engraved with a laser machine. Everyone is disturbed by the story, but things get even more awkward when they discover the memories on the tortillas. Lillian finds pictures of restaurants that closed because of her bad reviews, and Anne is shocked to see photographs of her husband's private life. One in particular shows Richard going out with a strange woman, but Richard swears it's just a prank. George finds pictures of his role as Dr. Sunshine, a movie that did awful when it came out, and the Tech brothers are disturbed to find their company's tax records that prove they've created invoices with fake charges. Elsa refuses to explain how they acquired that information, and when the men threaten with closing up this place, Elsa cryptically says it won't be necessary. Tyler sees himself taking pictures of the food and thinks Sloak hates him. Margot finds the images insulting and wants to send the dish back, but Tyler snaps at her and calls her a child for not behaving correctly. Hurt, Margot decides to go to the bathroom, and Elsa rushes to stop her from entering a forbidden silver door. When she makes it to the bathroom, Margot gets close to the window to have a smoke and notices an employee running with a pair of angel wings in his arms. At that moment, Sloak comes to ask Margot why she refused to eat again since he's feeling wounded by her attitude, but Margot just says she isn't that hungry. Sloak also wants to know who she really is, and when she says she's just Margot from Nebraska, Sloak doesn't believe her. A moment later, 
The cooks start the preparations for the fourth course by putting a piece of fabric and some decorations on the floor. Slowik introduces everyone to Jeremy, one of his sous chefs who created the next dish called the mess. Jeremy studied in an important culinary school and his dream has always been to work for Slowik, and while Slowik admits he's talented, he doesn't think Jeremy is great. Jeremy may want a life full of prestige like Slowik's, but Slowik thinks his life is full of pressure, not to mention all the unhappy customers and critics that won't appreciate his work. Slowik asks Jeremy if he wants that life, and when Jeremy says no, Slowik kisses him on both cheeks and steps back before Jeremy takes out a gun. Then Slowik announces the fourth course and Jeremy ends things in front of anyone. The other cooks aren't surprised by this and watch solemnly, but all the guests freak out and step back except for Tyler, who finds this fascinating. As the body is taken away, Slowik asks everyone to sit down and accept this as part of the show. Everyone begins discussing if the death had been real or not, and Richard has had enough. He tries to leave with Anne, but Elsa stops him, explaining there's no available boat. Richard still insists, causing Elsa to order the chefs to grab him and get his ring finger. Guests start freaking out again except for Tyler, who is still enjoying his meal without a care. While Richard wiggles on the floor in pain, Elsa returns the fallen wedding ring to Anne. Slowik once again explains this is part of the menu, and Lillian accepts it, but the others are starting to get afraid. Felicity wants George to have a talk with Slowik since supposedly they're friends, but George confesses he lied to impress her. Elsa brings Margot to the kitchen, where Slowik tells her she's simply wrong. He can tell she isn't a Margot and that's a problem because she wasn't part of that original menu plan. Slowik wants to know if Margot is on the side of the guests or the restaurants, not that it matters because everyone's dying tonight anyway. Margot rushes back to her table in tears and slaps Tyler when he won't stop talking about the food. The whole mood in the restaurant is tense and nervous. Soren goes crazy and decides to try to break a window with a chair, but it's made of unbreakable glass, so Elsa just takes him back to his table. The next course is tea served as a palate cleanser, and Slowik takes the chance to ask if anyone has any questions. Tyler makes a stupid question about the tea, but George comes through and wonders what's going on. Slowik explains their ingredients in a degustation concept but this shouldn't be a surprise. For example, Lillian is a monster that causes restaurants to close because of her personal taste, and Ted coddles her. The cooks bring more broken emulsion for Lillian, and Elsa brings Margot a kitchen timer saying she has 10 minutes. Then it asks for a doctor for Richard, so Slowik points out they've been the most loyal customers for 5 years yet they can't name a single dish they've eaten here. Slowik worked to become a very exclusive chef but it wasn't until recently that he finally understood he's been working to satisfy people that can't be satisfied, like his own mother. Since Slowik keeps referring to the place as his restaurant, Bryce reminds him that the actual owner is Doug Varick. Slowik replies he actually owns Doug himself, and at that moment it's revealed that Doug is hanging outside while wearing the angel wings. Dave tries to offer money to save him and when Slowik turns him down, he tries to run away, only to be stopped by the staff. Bryce points out Doug kept Slowik open through the pandemic, but Slowik complains that Doug kept questioning his menu. Elsa makes a sign with her arms and Doug is lowered into the sea until he drowns, prompting Slowik to announce he's finally free before going to his office. Suddenly the timer on Margot's table rings and she's asked to go see Slowik. Margot admits she isn't supposed to be here, and in return Slowik admits he can tell Margot's a fellow industry worker. He wants to know why Margot kept staring at Richard, making her confess that she's actually a street worker. Richard had been one of the few clients that managed to rattle her because he wanted her to pretend to be his daughter while they were getting frisky. Both Slowik and Margot agree that they used to enjoy serving others and bad clients have made them hate their jobs. Afterward, Slowik takes everyone outside. The next course is presented by sous chef Catherine, who explains Slowik has flirted with her many times, and she's always said no. Slowik didn't fire her but stopped looking her in the eye, and this inspired the next dish, called Man's Folly. Then Catherine stabs Slowik on his leg and hugs him before staining his chef uniform with blood, prompting him to apologize. Now all the male guests are given a chance to escape, they'll have a head start of 45 seconds, and then the staff will try to catch them. All the men begin running except for Tyler, so Slowik has to send him out there while Catherine takes the women inside. The women try the sixth course while sharing a table with Catherine, who explains everyone dies was her idea. Lillian's compliments make her cry, and all the other ladies begin offering compliments as well to keep her happy. And asks Margot if she knows her husband and Margot admits she does, but Anne doesn't comment on it. Margot ends up admitting her real name is Erin and she's from Massachusetts. Outside, Tyler spies on them through the window because he hates that he's missing a course. Meanwhile the staff goes after the men and finds them with no issues, no matter if they went to the forest or the beach. Ted hid in the smokehouse, and for his efforts he's given a Pissar egg. All the men are brought back to the restaurant and George sarcastically apologizes to Felicity for being a failure, which makes her admit she's been stealing money from him. George already knew, and Felicity knew he knew. Suddenly Slowik announces the menu can't continue as planned until they solve an unresolved matter. He approaches Tyler and makes him confess that he had always known tonight's menu would include everyone dies. Tyler had a date but his girlfriend broke up with him, so he hired Margot because the restaurant didn't take reservations for just one, never caring about the fact she'd die. 
Margot's upset by this revelation and attacks Tyler, but the staff quickly pulls them apart. Next Sloak points out how much Tyler knows about food and gifts him a chef's uniform before pushing into the kitchen, asking him to cook in front of everyone even if Tyler doesn't want to. Tyler's cooking is messy, especially since Sloak keeps making fun of him for being Mr. Noldigable Foodie, meaning the final dish is an absolute disaster. Sloak tells Tyler he's why the mystery has been drained from his art and whispers something in his ear that causes Tyler to take off the chef jacket and run in tears. Afterward, Sloak takes Margot aside to ask for a favor. To start preparing dessert, they require a large barrel that is supposed to be in a corner but Elsa forgot to bring. Sloak wants Margot to go get it and ignores Elsa when she says the staff can do it. On her way out, Margot discovers Tyler has ended things for himself, but she doesn't care. Then Sloak returns to the dining area, where George points out that this isn't really fair. Sloak explains George is being punished because he saw Dr. Sunshine some years ago and ruined the first day off he had in months. On the other hand, Felicity will die because she graduated from Brown University without any student debt. Meanwhile Margot makes it to the smokehouse but instead of grabbing the barrel, she grabs a knife. Afterward she sneaks into Sloak's house, which is an exact copy of the restaurant but with a bed in it. Margot tries to leave through the silver door, but she's interrupted by Elsa, who has her own knife and reminds her this area is out of limits. Suddenly Elsa attacks Margot, explaining she doesn't want to be replaced. Margot defends herself with objects from the kitchen as she points out she doesn't want to work here, but Elsa says she didn't forget the barrel, Sloak just never asked for it. Both women end up struggling on the floor, and by trying to keep the knife away from her body, Margot ends up accidentally killing Elsa. After her initial panic is over, Margot takes Elsa's keys and opens the silver door. There she finds a simple room with Sloak's memories from when he was younger and happier with a family and a job making hamburgers. There's also a radio in the room, and Margot tries to use it to call for help. Back in the restaurant, Bryce is presented with a cake because his friends had told the restaurant that it was his birthday. Margot suddenly interrupts by entering with the barrel through the main door, and Sloak tells her he used to be a monster, but everything he does today is pure. His chef hands are so strong that he can touch fire without feeling pain, because he can no longer be hurt. At that moment, a boat approaches the island, and Sloak realizes Margot used the radio. The staff immediately cleans all traces of blood from everyone and Sloak makes a threat, if the guests ask for help, then an innocent man will die. Coast Guard Dale enters the restaurant and asks what the problem is, but nobody dares to speak. Then Dale notices George and asks for an autograph because he's a big fan of Dr. Sunshine, so George pretends to give him one. When Dale is about to leave, he discovers the piece of paper actually says help us and takes out a gun, ready to defend the guests that now are brave enough to speak. Dale keeps the gun on Sloak for a few seconds only to suddenly turn around and point it at the candle on Margot's table, revealing it's just a lighter shape like a gun. Dale isn't a Coast Guard, he's another member of Sloak's staff, and now he can return to the kitchen. Sloak's very disappointed in Margot for having betrayed him and declares her to be as bad as the other guests. Margot remembers what she saw in the house and decides to take a risk. She suddenly claps to get Sloak's attention, announcing that she doesn't like his food and that she would like to send it back. Sloak falls for Margot's manipulative tactics as she points out all the dishes were an intellectual exercise rather than something to enjoy. She's still hungry, so she wants to eat a proper cheeseburger, not some fancy deconstructed poop. For the first time in the day, Sloak smiles and accepts to prepare a traditional cheeseburger with fries for 9.95. All the cooks watch with fascination how happy Sloak looks preparing a traditional cheeseburger, which he presents to Margot with pride. Margot gives it a bite and approves of the taste, but she also thinks it's too much for her to finish and asks for the rest to go. Sloak's still in a trance so she does as he says, and once Margot has her bag, she leaves a $10 bill and leaves the restaurant. On her way out, Margot hesitates because the others are still in danger, but and tells her to go with a gesture. While Margot makes it to the harbor and escapes on the boat Dale left behind, Sloak reminds everyone it's time to pay. The cost is $1,250 per head under a no-tip system, and everyone gets a bag of goodies that includes one of Doug's fingers. Everyone hands their credit cards, and a moment later, Sloak announces it's time for dessert. The cooks begin decorating the floor as if it was a plate, then they put chocolate hats and marshmallow vests on the guests. Sloak reminds everyone they represent the ruin of his life and now they shall be part of it, so the dessert will be the most offensive assault on the human palate, the s'more. This is usually prepared over a fire, thus Sloak grabs a lump of coal from the oven with his bare hands and announces a cleansing as he throws it on the decorations the cooks left, causing a fire that takes over the restaurant and all the people in it. Meanwhile Margot stops the boat to finish her cheeseburger while watching the restaurant burn, using the copy of the menu that came with the gift bag to wipe her mouth.